walked in darkness have seen a great light. We say together, those who lived in the land of the deep darkness, on them has the light shone. This is the evening when creation stood still and held its breath. For God was doing the most unbelievable this is the evening when God embraced humanity from the inside as one of us from birth to death. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, all grace and truth. We stand on the brink of God's time and light again the candles of hope. Peace, joy, and celebrate the birth of our Saviour, Jesus, the light coming into the world. Love God, you have come to shine the world to make the world the world. Place the Christ child in the manger. For you have made this deep night more radiant than the summer sun at noon. As the light of Christ is born among us, may we welcome you as one of us, yet worship him as one with you, the Holy Saviour of humankind. To you, to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give our praise and adoration for the Lord. Amen. As we come together to welcome the light that shines in the darkness of this night, let us not only be those who celebrate but also be numbered among those who are the recipients of that saving grace of Christ Jesus. God of this whole night, because we have sometimes sought you spasmodically, without the same dedication and time and effort that we give to passing fads and diversions, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. God of this holy night, because we've often not loved and served you in the happiness or sorrows of our neighbours and enemies, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. God of this holy night, because there are times we have not respected ourselves enough to be honest in affirming personal strengths and admitting our weaknesses, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. God of newborn hopes and enduring promises, give us our Father, to remove the shame, shame of the things done, done and left undone, and to restore to us the eagerness and joy that may the shepherd come to seek the new thing of God has done. Through Jesus Christ, your holy child, Amen. God, who is both power and love, forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to Christ our Saviour. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. As she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went to haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, as it had been told them. Thank the Lord for this his glorious gospel. May he trust us. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this is somewhat of a messy night. Now, it's not messy in the way that uh, has often been my experience of an early evening service in other churches. 
Because usually that's the messy service that involves nativity plays and small children and uh, on one occasion uh, even a donkey. And that's involved some mess, I can tell you. It's not messy in the way that we've got shuffling feet and uh, people crowded in trying to fit into the available space. It's not messy in the way that, uh, you know, we're holding candles sometimes for these types of services where the, the wax might be dropping down on our hand. We're not allowed to do all of those things. It's messy, I think, in a, a different way because in some ways we're, we're cobbling together a worship service that has some of the elements that we know and that we love, but with lots of gaps. You know, some people might be grateful there's only one scripture reading. We're, we're not singing the beautiful songs and responses that we normally would be. We have a, a solo member of our choir rather than the gathering of the talent that we have in this place. It's messy because we're trying to say hello and meet the needs of the people at home who watch us online, uh, but also with the needs of you who are gathered here with us. It's messy because even up until an hour or so before our service started, some of those people who wanted to come felt that they had to make the wise decision that with the current restrictions, uh, with the pandemic, that they should stay at home. It's a messy night because many of us are not enjoying the sound of our grandchildren or our relatives or people gathered around with a few drinks. It's messy because it's there. Now in some ways I think the beauty of that is that perhaps it gives us an opportunity to reflect even more so on the reality of this story of the birth of Christ. Because even as I was leaving um, the, uh, the, the flat here tonight and I, I saw the beautiful um, King's College Choir carols, which again is also a bit messy because they don't have a congregation either, uh, I thought, you know, we, we've, we've made Christmas in some ways um, tasteful for some of us. You know, we've, we've kind of, if you like, sanitised the reality of what was going on. And Luke's Gospel in particular, I think, draws us to reflect on the messiness of this birth. I mean, most of us don't have straw on the floor of our homes. Most of you who have had children didn't have to do it in a stable. And I'm not sure, unless you're from a farming family, I'm not sure that you had shepherds come and uh, look at you just after you've given birth. This story in Luke's Gospel emphasises, if you like, the messiness of the life that was being had at that time. I mean, Mary and Joseph not only were having to give birth in very messy circumstances, they were living in really messy circumstances. That call to travel to Bethlehem by the Roman governor is in itself a sign of the threat that they were living under, the, the not normal circumstances that they were living under, the constraints that they were living under. They were part of an occupied country that had been occupied because of the machinations of politicians jostling for, um, for influence and power. They were a displaced people because of that. And to be honest, not obeying the, uh, the Roman governor's 
ruling that you would travel to become registered would have been a life-threatening thing. It was messy because the whole story is based on impossible things. Now tonight is not the night for a biology or a, a, a history lesson and, and a theolo theological talk about the nature of the virgin birth. I think what I would want you to take home tonight though is a reminder of how impossible this whole story is. Mary, a young, unmarried woman, says yes to a call from God to have a child. Joseph, an upstanding member of the community, says yes to support her when really she should have been shunned and taken out to the edge of the village and stoned to death for being an unmarried mother. Earlier in this Gospel we have the story of um, her going to see her cousin Elizabeth, who like Sarah in the Old Testament was well past childbearing age and it was seemingly impossible that she should also have a child, John the Baptist. And then the first in Luke's Gospel, the first people to come and visit them were not kings. You know, we're not going to celebrate that until the Epiphany. That's, that's a story we're going to do a long way away, and that's why um, the kings are down the back. They're nowhere near the birth yet. But what we have got is a gap under our altar where our shepherds were, because they are the ones who have come. Sweaty, outdoors men, possibly and women, who knows, who were messy. And they were messy because they were the deep outsiders. They were the ones who took the really bad jobs. The ones who had to go out and, and live out in the open with their sheep. And then if anything happened to that sheep, even though they were probably the most lowly paid and reimbursed people in the community, they would have to take responsibility for any sheep that they lost. They talk about them in the scriptures, I think, as people of the land, and it's quite possibly <coughs> that they were um, the, the, mixed, uh, the mixed race, if you like, people who uh, lived on the fringes of Jewish society because they were possibly the remnant leftover of the people who had stayed in the country when most of Israel were taken off into captivity. And because of that, you know, there was a little question about their purity, that they possibly intermarried with some of the, those pesky pagan people who also happened to be in the land. This is a messy story. And it's a subversive story because it challenges us to consider our priorities. It challenges us to reflect on what our call might be to follow this person of Christ born in such a fragile and messy way tonight. It challenges us to consider that our God can do impossible things. That in the messiness of our lives, our God can do impossible things. My prayer tonight, in the midst of all the dislocation and the discomfort and the worry and the anxiety, in the, the, the loneliness that some will feel and the, the sadness that others will feel at not being able to connect with those that they love, that you might hear this message of hope and love and kindness and response in the messiness of your lives and in the messiness of what is happening in our world. This white Christ candle, this little plaster figure 
of the baby in a stable. Our eye are our reminders that in the dark night light shines and that amongst us a child is born who gives hope and promise for new life and new beginnings. May you feel something of that joy and hope tonight. Amen. And Ted, you've got something lovely to play while that echoes around a bit. Oh, in fact, there's going to be a song. Not only is it playing, we have a guest artist. Hunger, 
bless your food with us. Where there is abundance, may be shared. Where there is despondency, bring your sure hope. Where there are high spirits, let there be gratitude. Where there is bondage, bless your deliverance. Where there is liberty, may it be pleasant. Where there is worship, fill it with great joy. Where there is desire, let there be good news. who will work through the night to keep people alive or to soothe suffering. We give thanks to family, particularly those far away. Receive these prayers and bless all people with the good tidings of great joy. In the name of Christ Jesus and to your praise and glory. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Go and continue to celebrate this amazing thing that God has done. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all. Blessings on you. Ted, have you got something lovely for us as we move into the next part of our service? <laughs>